Hey there, thanks for tuning in to DuckBricks. I'm Chris, and to celebrate 100 years of the Disney company, LEGO has partnered with the company to release a ton of brand new special Disney sets this year in 2023, and the land, the LEGO Ambassador Network, have sent me one of them to review, which is the House From Up. Now, this is a set that a lot of people have been wanting for a very long time. This is something that appeared quite a few times on LEGO Ideas, but never really was approved as an official LEGO product, until LEGO just decided to make Make it themselves into a set that's releasing very very soon in 2023. And so I think we just all want to jump right into the review. There's a lot of great minifigures, of course you have the dog, and of course the house with the balloons. It looks fantastic. I can't wait to get into this, so let's jump in right now and go. Alright, so this is the brand new LEGO Up house set. It comes with two minifigures, one special new molded animal, and retails for a rather unfortunate 60 US dollars. Let's take a closer look at the set, at the build, and of course at the figures, which we'll take a look at at the very end. So I'll set them aside for now, and stay tuned for that. So this is the classic house from Disney Pixar's Up! movie. It is obviously a very striking and iconic build. It is basically the large house that Carl uses to fly up in the air with his balloons, and there's a bit of a side build as well for the balloons to actually be inflated. Of course, a squirrel, as well as a package and a mailbox. I kind of wish that this was part of the house itself. It feels kind of odd to just have this as a separate thing, but obviously the main focus is on the house itself. So let's get into that first. To me, the most interesting thing about this build are the building techniques, particularly around the front of the house itself. As you can see, they have this very nice curved window area, which is really smartly done using a combination of different cheese plates like here. You can see the double cheese plates going alongside these sides of the walls. And then as you rotate it all the way around, it's actually a surprisingly simple build. The way they have it done is just via a combination of clips and bars, but they basically just have this perfectly adjusted so it is fully smooth against one side of the house and then smooth on these corners. It's nothing super crazy. It's a building technique we definitely have seen before, but I really like it for what it is. And it really just gives that model the extra feeling of sophistication that I really do appreciate about the build itself. However, as we rotate the house onto its side, you may notice that this is a very thin model. There is not a lot of space for figures to walk around and move around in the house itself. There are two studs once you go into the front door. Again, another two studs to stand up figures. There's a bit more space here with a chair to sit down on, but again, really limited space. The TV itself has to be facing outwards towards, I guess, the human player, because obviously there isn't enough room to just have it face towards the figures. There's a very, very small bed, and there's no way to get minifigures up and down different levels of the houses. There's kind of a classic scene where as Carl gets older, he has to use his special motorized lift to get up to his upper houses, which I was really hoping would be able to be seen here, having him go up the stairs in his little motorized wheelchair lift, but unfortunately, they do not have anything like that. It is basically just a super simple build for the house. Zooming in a little bit on the details, I want to take a closer look at what this build has to offer, starting off with the bottom floor. A lot of the really nice details come in the form of stickers, where you can see a lot of really fantastic stickers of the characters themselves placed on the wall here. I really do appreciate the amount of detail that went into these stickers themselves. Feels really nice to be able to see there's the original image of where they wanted the house to go up on the top of the cliff, and then you have him and his wife up there as well, and I think one of my favorite pieces in here is a new print for a Lego minifigure head where if we zoom in right here you can see that this is the savings jar with the money that they were saving for Paradise Falls. So that is a really nice touch. I love that particular sticker. I think it's really cute and it is a dual-sided clear minifigure head which looks just like the actual thing in the movie. So big big fan of that. I really do appreciate that piece. Overall though, the rest of the build is really simple Oh, going into the build itself. You have a very tight and compact little bird statue right there. So you have just a little piece of a red bird, which we have seen before in Harry Potter sets. That was a baby phoenix. And also you can see this right here, which is a bit of a gramophone or record player. Also very much just squished up against the wall there. And then going into the entrance area, the door is placed so far backwards to allow for there to be a front porch that there really isn't any room for figures. In fact, if you just take a minifigure here, for example, and place him right there, that's basically all you can do in order to have a figure to be played around with. It is, again, a very narrow build. 
I like the sticker for the grandfather clock, though. That is a really nice one. And I do appreciate the external detail of having a rail here. That does look pretty nice to have a nice outer balcony here. Otherwise, though, not a ton of stuff going on with this build. My favorite part to put together was easily this particular window right here. Looks really good. It was a very clever and seamless build to actually get these all together. Big fan of how that turned out. So that's definitely one of my favorite pieces of the build itself. Moving onwards to the second floor of the house, it again is fairly bare, although they did manage to pack in a lot of little details into the different floors. The main one, obviously, is this TV, which is showcasing kind of the future destinations they want to go to in the world. There is a really nice sticker in the back here, if I have to remove the TV to get to it, but you can see that once you remove it from the bin, there is a nice sticker for My Adventure Book. So this is a really cute piece to use for just all sorts of different applications. You can open it up. It's just using the standard once upon a time at print right there, but I think I really like the sticker of the My Adventure book. Obviously looks just like how it appeared in the movie itself, so it is great to see that as an actual sticker. And the thing I will say about this model is that despite the fact that space is limited, the designers really went above and beyond to give a lot of little Easter eggs and details. You have another nice sticker there. Just little Easter eggs to the movie itself to really make it feel authentic given the space that they were working with. Lastly, you have a multicolored bed which is super simple, and otherwise, that's basically all there is to see about this particular house. Yeah, it's really small for what you pay for, and we're going to be talking about price later on, I have a lot of thoughts on the price. But as it is right now, it is a nice little charming house, it is $60 though. The last thing I want to discuss here as we go upwards is obviously talking about the balloons. This is one of the most important features of the up house in general, where you can see they have included a ton of different balloons. It was easily one of the most tedious parts of the set was putting this together. But then when you zoom out, I almost feel like there should have been more balloons. Like zooming out from the house itself, it feels almost like there's not enough balloons. Obviously, if you look at how it looks like in the movie, the amount of balloons is absolutely massive, just sprouting out of the chimney. Whereas here, it feels like a nice little bushel. I'm not super convinced that this would be able to lift the house up at all, so that is what it is. I like that they included the balloons themselves, but I do feel that maybe it would have been nice to have just a bigger mass of balloons. That being said, I also appreciate how they did not do that, because that would have been even more tedious than this already was. It was a matter of just stacking these rounded pieces onto bars, onto clips, onto these round octagonal pieces, and yeah, not the most interesting build, but again, it looks good when put together. Lastly, I want to just give a brief mention to just this little space here. Super, super simple. You just have a nice little mailbox using the rounded pieces right here. You have four more balloons, or I guess a fifth being made on the pump here. And of course you had to include a squirrel, but yeah, otherwise this is just another random side part that's a little bit detached from the main build itself. The last thing I want to talk about though are the minifigures and new characters introduced for the set. So. Obviously you have the two main characters from the movie, but you also have what is probably my favorite piece of the set, which is the up dog. Of course, Doug makes his first appearance in Lego form in this set, and he looks absolutely adorable. I think this is one of my favorite Lego dog molds ever. He is actually dual molded in brown, dark brown and tan, so the nose is actually a special alternate mold. Same with the collar and even the mouth there, where you can see inside there is all sorts of brown coloration inside of him. This is such an adorable new piece. I absolutely love this dog mold. I am sure it will not appear outside of the set unless LEGO for whatever reason decides to make more upsets, which is very unlikely. So I think it's really cool how this got a specialized mold. It's pretty rare that LEGO themes will get specialized stuff like this, but I do feel like in this case it was absolutely warranted. Speaking of specialized new molds, there is another new mold that debuts in the set. Maybe this is what contributed towards the price, but we have a dual molded hat with hair piece here, which is a really great piece to get. Now this, unlike Doug, is a piece that I really hope is recolored in all sorts of different colors. It is a pretty ubiquitous piece. It is not necessarily tied to the one character, so I really do appreciate how they were able to make a new mold for this, which also would look good completely outside of the context for Disney. Looking at this minifigure in general, you have an 
alternate expression, which is a good one to get. I really love the expression here. It's just really cute and funny to see. Of course, you have all of the Boy Scouts medals on the chest there, which is a very unique print. And what's very special about this figure is that he sports dual molded arms and triple molded legs. That's right. Those are three different types of plastic, or I guess technically two different ones, but they're terminating at a certain end to showcase the shorts. So really cool to get this almost feels like a collectible minifigure style of quality where you have a new mold new head prints new torso print and dual molding and triple molding they went all out when making this minifigure and it really shows the minifigures are easily the highlight of the set of course when you remove the backpack it is a fairly simple printing on the back of the torso which is totally fine because you're not going to be seeing the back of the torso at all pretty much ever. You really do need to have the backpack on for the complete look and feel for the figure. So that's one thing I do really appreciate is that they did include the backpack and they also included a little stud on the bottom so you can stand him up straight without him toppling over. Finally, we can take a look at pretty much probably the main figure of the set. This is Carl from Up, and he looks really fantastic. You have two different amazing facial expressions, which are just so accurate to the movie. You have a very kind of grumpy and angry expression there, which is a really funny one to see. And then, of course, you have a much happier one when he's a little bit more content with how he is in life and whatnot, which is a really nice thing. He uses mid legs, which are typically meant to signify teenagers, but I guess in this case, it is meant to signify that he has gone older and is a little bit more hunched over, which I think is pretty perfect. Rotating on the back, super simple torso print. I also really like the build for the walker, which is also very simple, just using a roller skate element, but it works out totally fine. And overall, the minifigures are the standout characters and things to get in the set itself. Again, those two new molds being some of the best things to come out of the set. But what about the set as a whole? Because this is undeniably a really nice and charming and fun build. I really appreciate it for what it is. It is a really nice representation of the house from Up. Could it have been bigger? Could it have been a lot bigger? Yes, absolutely. But at this particular size, I think they were able to pull off pretty much everything they would want to include in a set like this. The only downside is that, yeah, this is 60 US dollars, which seems really, really high for what you get. Disney sets are kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they are well-priced, sometimes they are really expensive. This one feels like it falls into the really expensive category, and for what you get, I honestly don't think this really feels like 60 US dollars. 40 for the building, probably. Add in another, and I'm being generous here, another 10 for the minifigures and Doug, that only brings us to 50. I'm honestly not really seeing where $60 is coming from. Uh, of course, this is just my opinion. If you disagree, please let me know in the comments. What do you think of the build? Do you think it's worth the money? Because it is a lot of money to pay for something that honestly isn't that big, especially when you rotate the house onto the side. It is very narrow. There is not a lot of interior space. The interior space is well used. They have absolutely packed it chock full of details. There are a lot of things to do here, a lot of things to see inside the house. But at the end of the day, it's basically just six studs wide and a lot of those studs are for the front porch so when you go inside you've got two studs and another two studs plus a chair so honestly this is just not the best price set i really do wish that it was just better priced in general i guess lego figured that the up house is something that has been really popular i know there's been a lego idea submission that keeps on getting rejected for a much larger version of this this thankfully is very different than the lego idea submission that keeps getting to 10k so there won't be any hopefully any complaints about lego stealing the idea because it is very different it's a lot smaller but it's not cheaper to correspond with the smaller size this feels like a set that was supposed to be $50, but due to price increases, it became $60. I don't know if that's accurate, but it just feels a little bit too expensive to me. But that's just my thoughts. Of course, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this set? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And are you willing to pay the $60 price point? Again, I will say that LEGO did send me this set as part of the LEGO Ambassador Network, so they provided the set for free. But all the thoughts and opinions expressed in the review, especially those concerning the price, are obviously my own. I personally would say, wait for a sale to get this. It's a really nice set. It has 
two really excellent new molds in the forms of Doug and the hat hair combo, a lot of great minifigures, but it just doesn't feel worth $60 after having it in hand. That's how I feel. It is great to get a LEGO upset. I hope LEGO makes more Pixar related sets. I would love to see more sets based on classic Pixar movies other than just like Toy Story and stuff like that. So really cool how we're getting this and I hope this means we'll be getting more specialized LEGO Pixar stuff in the future, but just hopefully not this egregiously overpriced. All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the Disney Up House. This is a fantastic set. I really would not have expected LEGO to actually make this, but I'm really happy that they made it into a retail set that honestly isn't really that expensive for what it is. I feel like if they wanted to, they could have maybe made it a lot more expensive, so I'm glad they tried to make it as small as possible in ways that they could. And so we've about summed up our look at this special Up House. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of the set. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Will you be getting it when it releases? Thank you all so much for tuning in to Duck Bricks. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Bye for now.